This algebra review lesson is about factoring. And this is something that a lot of people find pretty tricky to do. And I'll explain what factoring is, and I'll tell you why it's a little bit tricky. And then I'll go over some techniques that we have for factoring algebraic expressions. Factoring is the opposite of multiplying. So for example, we can take 12, and we can say 12 is equal to 4 times 3. And the 4 and the 3 are factors of 12, two things that when multiplied together give us the original number. And that's what factoring is. It's taking something and breaking it up into its factors. And in this case, that's, that's pretty easy to do because we've memorized our multiplication tables and we know that 12 is 4 times 3. 12 could also be factored as 6 times 2. A lot of times there's more than one way to factor something. Now, numbers can factor as long as they're not prime numbers. Algebraic expressions can factor too. For example, if I have this, x squared plus 8x plus 15, I can split this whole expression up into two things that when multiplied together will result in that expression. And here they are. I can write this as x plus 3 and x plus 5. These are two things, the x plus 3 and the x plus 5. And if I multiply those two things together, they give me my original expression. And you can see that happen if you do a FOIL. If I multiply these together, x plus 3 times x plus 5. I'll, I'll do the FOIL here, and you'll see that it does result in that expression. I do the first, that's x times x. And then the outer, that gives me a 5x. And the inner, I have a 3 times x. And the last is 3 times 5 is 15. And you can see I have x squared plus 8x right there plus 15. So these two things multiplied together do, in fact, give me that original trinomial right here. Now, the difficult thing about factoring is that this is not at all obvious. Uh, maybe it is with a little bit of practice, but especially with larger, more complicated expressions than this, it's not at all obvious in many cases what you might break it up into such that the pieces multiply together to give you the original expression. In other words, it's, it's often not at all obvious what the factors are. Now, here, here's why factoring can be difficult. We know that 4 times 3 equals 12. We know that because we've memorized multi multiplication tables way back in first or second or third grade. We've learned that, that 4 times 3 is 12. And even if we don't have small numbers that we've memorized the answer to, say we had 43 times 198. If we wanted to multiply that, we have a systematic procedure that we can go through that allows us to multiply. We do 8 times 3 is 24, and we carry the 2 and put the 4. 8 times 4 is 32, and then we add that 2 and get 34, and put a 0 down, and so on. And we continue the process and until we get an answer. And we have this procedure, this algorithm, these steps to follow that are guaranteed to give us the right answer every time, even if these original numbers are gigantic. The problem is we don't have a way to go in the opposite direction. We don't have a way to take the answer and break it up into the original numbers that works every single time. In this case, it was very easy because we know that 12 is equal to 4 times 3. But what if I said, take the number 4,872,941 and break that up into two factors. Give me two numbers such that when I multiply them together, they give me that original number. Well, you could probably stare at that a while for a long time and not find the two numbers. And then you might try, do a little trial and error or something like that. But there's not a set process for factoring or unmultiplying like there is for multiplying. So factoring because of that is fairly difficult. We don't have a standard approach that works every single time like the multiplication algorithm. But we do have some techniques for factoring, some things we can try, that, and some are more appropriate than others in some situations. And I'll go over this, those te techniques, the things that we can do to approach a factoring problem. And if you learn these techniques, you'll be able to take expressions like this one break them up into their factors, and that allows you in many, many cases to work with the expressions more e easily and to solve problems that involve those expressions.